Well, good afternoon. I just can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here with all of you today. You know, I know a lot of you here, but there are some that I don't know, and so I'm really anxious to make a lot of new friends today. Um, let me begin by thanking the Emily Griffith Foundation, the Denver Foundation, the Colorado Women's Foundation, and Susan Kiley for bringing us all together. And you are some of the most important women in the Denver region. We, that is you and me, understand that opportunity comes in many forms and that those of us who have benefited from it have much to share with one another and with others. It's what learning circles are all about. I'm eager for the conversations to begin, so I'm going to try and make my, uh, my remarks short. I'd also like to thank Albi and to Heather Grady for making this event happen in this meaningful space where discussions, debates, and decisions have been made for generations. Nearly 99 years ago, Emily Griffith had a conversation in this very room with Denver leaders about the importance of workforce education and training, exactly like the conversations that we're gonna have today. I believe that there is an aura of nearly 100 years of important discussions that flowed about this room. So it's the perfect place for us to be together. Yesterday, I had the privilege of viewing the new campus of the Emily Griffith uh, Technical College, and it's amazing. For those of you who have not been there, you should take some time to go see it. All of the facilities are modern, they're spacious, and they're ready for creating opportunity just like Emily would have wanted. What a legacy she created. Can't you just imagine that she's looking here at us and looking at Denver and looking at the prosperity that exists here and smiling and saying, well done. And we know that her school has played no small part in making sure that prosperity and opportunity to achieve were accessible to anyone. Today, I would like to comment on a few topics. First, I thought I might bring a little bit of DC and my experience there into your thoughts. And then I would like to share with you why I so eagerly accepted this opportunity to be here with you, uh, along with the fact that Albi and Juanita Chacon told me that I had to, and I always know when I, uh, I'm very good at following directions and who I say yes to. As many of you know, I recently retired from the federal service. I've spent nearly 25 years in public service, and I will say that they have been rewarding, they have been challenging, they've been exciting, and I admit some of the hardest work I've ever done. During the last six and a half years of my service to President Obama, as Chief of Staff at the DOL, as his National Political Campaign Director in the 2012 campaign, and as his Director of the, U of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, I've traveled extensively throughout this country. I've been to large urban areas, growing suburban regions, rural America, border towns, and the bayous of Louisiana. I remember the day that my friend Ken Salazar and I spent visiting voters in the Everglades of Florida. In all of these locales, I listened intently to what residents dreamed of for themselves and for their families. As you might imagine, I have been reflecting on the next chapter in my life, and I'm looking back because I want to have the clarity of vision as I look forward. As I recall my travels, I realize that hopes and dreams didn't vary much in those conversations. They didn't vary by gender or age, not by income, not by race or ethnicity, 
everywhere I went, each conversation centered around hope. Hope for a chance to succeed. Hope to support oneself and one's family. And hope to be able to be part of the prosperity that our country represents throughout the world. They also spoke about the fairness of prosperity, how our country, how our country can and must ensure that we all have a fair chance to the success we work for. Now, unless you think I'm about ready to launch into a political speech, I assure you that I'm not going to do that. Although you know my politics, that's not why I want to tell you these stories. I'm telling you about these conversations because there is more to them. When I was in the Louisiana bayous, I remember sitting with fishers and their families, and they told me about the devastation of the oil spill and how it had changed their lives forever. How after generations of fishers earned their livelihood on shrimping, they now needed to learn new skills so that their families could have a chance to survive. When I was in Brownsville, Texas, I met with some of the smartest young college students I'd ever met. And they told me about what their dreams of success looked like. Most of them would be the first in their families to graduate university. And when I met with a group of middle-income women in Sacramento, California, I listened to their concerns about whether their children would have the education they needed to earn a living. I keep thinking about those conversations. And a couple of ahas have emerged for me. I'd like to share them with you. First, there was a word that kept coming up over and over again. A common word that those literally hundreds of conversations shared. And that word is chance. I want a chance to succeed. I want my children to have a chance to earn a living. I want a chance to buy a home that my family can live in. I want a chance to finish my education and have a successful career. All I want is a chance. So what is chance? Where does it come from? Did you have it? Do I have it? By everyone's definition, I am the beneficiary of chance. I am, as Emily would describe, the product of tremendous opportunity. My family lived in the North Lincoln homes, subsidized housing, when I was born. My parents had moved to Denver from the San Luis Valley because they wanted to provide better health care for my sister, a better education for my brothers, and a better life for us all. Just by chance, my father met a man. He quite literally ran into him. And this man, this stranger, saw something in my father that he liked. And he gave him a chance at a new job. My father's chance made my chances happen. A move to Aurora, the intervention in my education by two teachers who pushed me towards university, a chance meeting with a young Latino lawyer who felt as deeply as I did about the quality, quality of education for all students. All this. All this because one man cared about a Spanish-speaking father looking for a new profession so that his family could have a chance at success. Now, that brings me to the second point I'd like to make. Reflecting about what my family and others gave me, I know that I am incredibly grateful for all of the successes and for all of my challenges. As I have thought about these uh, past few months, about all that has go gone on for me in my career, 
I know that I may be smart, hopefully. I'm determined, most assuredly, my husband and Graciela will say, and I am passionate about the roles of women and Latinos in the decisions that affect our daily lives. And I absolutely know that I didn't find those successes on my own. There has been much written about how women must work to succeed. Sheryl Sandberg's recent book about leaning in brought great insight into her success and that it did not come easily nor without sacrifice. Ms. Sandberg's urging to not be afraid, to face each challenge with determination, and to build within ourselves the strength to lean in to the hardship, challenge, and barriers to success resonated with so many readers. After reading her book and others, I realized that there was yet another chapter or perhaps even a book to be written. How is it that we 99 are gathered here today? How did each of us reach the rung on the ladder where now others recognize our achievements and invite us to sit in the governor's mansion as women of opportunity? It goes without saying that you all must have leaned in every day to achieve what you have. But, mm, no, no. And I would like to acknowledge something else I believe has happened to all of us. Just for a moment, let your mind wander away and remember who in your life helped you become who you are today. Was it a parent, a teacher, a friend, a colleague? Who, my friends, did you lean on? In the Latino culture, circles of support are critical. Family and friends, male and female, whom we go to for support in times of challenge and happiness are strong. We lean on one another. We know these circles are critical not only for support, but for gathering strength as well. I know this to be true in women's circles as well. Our networks can be strong and determined. We know that the male model of singular achievement has kept the doors locked against us. I would venture to guess that 99% of us here have reached our rungs on the ladder of success because of what we did for ourselves, we leaned in, but also because we know that there was someone or some others who allowed us to lean on them. All of you have been invited here today because you are recognized in the Denver community as a woman of achievement. You have both leaned in and leaned on in such ways that your colleagues look to you as a woman who has taken opportunity and made the most of it. They look at you as the person who had a chance for success and you made great things happen. I remember the old home of Emily Griffith Opportunity School. I remember it because of its presence in a growing and vibrant downtown. I remember my brothers going to learn welding so they might join the Pipe Fitters Union. I remember recommending its classes to new immigrants to not only learn a new language, but also new skills. I remember adults who were looking for different skills so that they could expand their job opportunities. 
It gave all those in thousands, literally millions, more just what we all want for ourselves, a chance. Emily Griffith was the epitome of who I think about when I think about leaning on. She knew that it takes each and every one of us to help in our own way, to be the one that another can look to for help. So let me in conclude this insight to my reflections. They've been going on for quite a few months now. <laughs> All these years of public service have taught me many things. It's about listening to people we serve so that we might make their lives better. I have learned that public service is about being able to make change happen and about doing the very best job we can. I've also learned that I must be ready to continue to lean on, not only as one who will always need to look to others for wisdom and support, but also one who must be ready to be the strength that someone else seeks. When Federico Pena and his staff, including me, entered the mayor's office in 1983, we entered with little government management experience, but with amazing dreams of what Denver could be. We knew that if we gathered the right people around the table, that if we were inclusive and diverse, we could not only imagine a great city, we could build it. There is absolutely no question that together we leaned in to challenges, doubt, and yes, determined adversaries. And we truly did lean on one another. As there were many who thought Freddie and his dreamers didn't have a clue on how to rebuild a faltering, a faltering city. And now, 32 years later, in the governor's mansion, we are gathering all you amazing women around the table to make sure that pro the prosperity that Denver now holds can be shared by everyone. And just like those people I met on those many miles around the country, all we ever wanted to do was to create the chance. So today, we are asking you to allow us to lean on you Carly Simon playing in the background. <laughs> Let us harvest your thoughts on workforce development and the role Emily Griffith Technical College can play in continuing to provide students a chance for success, providing the tools to build a career, to follow a dream, to sustain a passion, is what colleges do. Emily's vision of what that could be for people from every walk of life is what we'll discuss today. Your ideas are going to be critical for helping us guide that discussion with thought leaders throughout the state. Again, I am very grateful to be able to be here with you today. As I start my new chapter in my life, I am looking forward to returning to the city I love. I relish the thought that I will be among all of you, women of opportunity who see the chance for even more of us to be the successes we all dream of. Thank you.